Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over just all the, a few different, not all the ways, but all a few different common ways that I use um, masking in Krita, uh, mainly for coloring. And today I'm going to be using um, one of the line art files that you get by donating $3 to my coffee. It's just three little ocean creatures that I kind of wanted to have fun with. And um, yeah, so just to get started, I have I duplicated that layer, the line art layer. And I set the top one on multiply, that way I can see the lines as I'm coloring. Uh, it, you know, it basically gets rid of the white. Otherwise, if I don't, I'm not going to be able to see what I'm coloring over. So I'm going to make a new layer for my color, and we're going to get started. The first and easiest way is using the wand tool. Now by default, the gross shrink selection is going to be zero. I recommend going above that um, for your line art, or selecting within the line art. Um, it just gives you a finer selection. Two um, might go outside the lines, which maybe you want, but I didn't. So I'm just going to keep it at one for the growth. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Uh, make sure you're on the line art layer to do this. Doesn't matter which one, just make sure you're on it. So as you can see, it's got a pretty good selection here. So it's pretty, pretty spot on. And if let's say you know, could, if this is um kind of cut off with this line here, so I need to add that back in. And I need to add the eyes in as well. So if you go here and hover, it's going to say add. Um, it's going to say add, but it's adding the selection. So I'm going to click, and it automatically will include this. I'm going to do that for the eyes as well. And I still have a little bit here that isn't uh, being added in, but that's not a big deal. It's right on the lines, and I can fix that later. Alright, so we're going to go up to our color layer before we do anything. I'm going to hit B for brush, and I'm just going to color. You can also just use the fill tool if you want. I didn't take that stroke out. Alright, so I'm going to hit Control shift a There's a few spots in the eyes that didn't get any color, and it looks like that's it. Yep. So that worked out pretty well. So, let's go to this little guppy here. You know, great, no no biggie. We want to add some color to him as well. Another way we can do this is the colorize mask editing tool. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, colorize mask editing, editing tool. So on the top line art layer, we're going to click anywhere, and it's going to get a little bit blurry. It's just basically saying color anywhere that's not black. So, we're going to pick yellow because the guppies that I have are yellow. I'm just going to scribble a line here, and here, and here, and here. Um, we're going to do that because it came out the line a little bit. There we go. And that's, that's it. But we got to make sure that the outside of our little guppy here is registering as transparent. So I'm just going to scribble outside him. And I'm actually going to scribble real quick in these, just in case. And I'm going to click on the green, move this down a little bit, and I'm going to hit transparent. So I'm telling Krita, hey, wherever that green color is, it's transparent, don't worry about it. And I'm going to hit update. And as you can see, my little guppy is filled in. Now the green is still there, but don't worry, it, it will go away. So when you're done adding your color and all that fun stuff, we're going to right click on the colorize layer and convert it to paint layer. The green is gone, my guppy is completely yellow. Looks good. And another way we can do all this is if we want to do manual selections, we can use these tools here. We can select um, anything within the rectangle, the sphere, um, we can make it hexagonal shapes, and once you go to your beginning point, a little circle pops up saying it's completed. Right now I'm still on the add function, so it's just adding it back on. And then here's, um, you can like do some curves and then select that way. And you can select by color. But I don't really have a lot of colors, so yeah. I'm just going to undo that. Alright, so we're going to use the the uh, free hand selection tool. And I'm just gonna, you know what, let me just say I want to make it like a little outline around here. 
I'm gonna add that. Add there. Cool. Um, we'll even this out a little bit. There we go. So oh, the colorized mask is on the wrong layer. There we go. Er, wrong order. But there we go. So now uh, I'm just gonna go back to the layer that I colored the little dumbo squid on, and um, they're like a pale color, so. I'll make this the blue, like it's underwater. So there we go. Yeah, so you can have blue outline. And then if I don't want that anymore, <clears throat> I can use my wand tool. Whoops. I can select inside the major pieces. Get some of that out of the way. And then I can go back to that freehand and just start adding everything else back in. So you can use uh, some of these tools in conjunction with each other, which is really nice. Because sometimes it's hard to get um, certain areas of your art, like you can't really anticipate, oh, well this is going to give me problems, you know. If you can, great, but if you can't, it's not a big deal. You can always go back and fix it. Cool. So I think that's pretty good. So then I'm just going to take the erase, oops. Eraser, I'm gonna hit B for brush and then E for eraser and erase it. And then Control Shift A to deselect. So now it's just a white blobfish and he's got a little bit of blue around him. He looks a little silly. I don't know why to add color to him, but I don't know. It's got that weird, like, old style children's book look to it. That makes sense. Like, if you get um, those poem books board the sidewalk ends, it's like that. Uh, or not really, but it, it reminds me of that era of kid drawing drawings from books. So, yeah. Okay, so that, we got the selection tools done, and there's a couple more ways we can do this. So let's say you want to, you know, start shading and do, multi, you know, make a layer, multiply it for your shading on the color below it. You want to make a group layer here, create an empty layer, and then add in your colored layer to that group. So we're going to have two layers. So I'm going to just say original color and then we're just going to say shading to the layer on top. That way you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'll just put color on the group. I'm going to put that in there too. I forgot about the colorized mask. I'll just call this copy color. Cool. Alright, so the shading layer um, we can do uh, the alpha inheritance, which is this A button, which stands for alpha. We're going to click on it so that a line appears through it. So let's, um, that pink's a little too dark. Let's do like a blue. Do a light blue. Come here and we'll, whoops, didn't hit multiply. We'll start shading and it looks like a little purple. So as you can see, I'm not, it's not coloring outside the lines. However, if I turn the alpha inheritance off, you can see it's still keeping that information, which um, maybe you don't want, but it could be useful. Like um, if, I, oops, if I start coloring and I forget what color I use to do the shading, I can just quickly turn that off and eye drop it. And that way I'm, you know, I'm still retaining the same uh, level of shading the color. Look how cute. I don't know why I'm like in a complete ocean mood lately. <laughs> but I think every artist has um, had a minor, I want to say obsession, but I don't think that's right, but not minor even, a major interest in ocean life. I've been, every time I see like an artist saying, oh yeah, I want to be a marine biologist, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of us out there. So I wanted to do that too. Alright, I also want to do genetics. I find that very fascinating. But anyway, so we're just gonna add some shading there. So cute. It's just so cute. Cool, so that's, that's good enough. And the yellow guppy. A little bit of green, I guess. See how that looks. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Add some shading to the fins and the gills. Right. There we go. A little bit to the fins. And I guess a little bit here. 
I don't think that looks right, but there we go. Okay, it's good enough. So yeah, and then um, that's that for the alpha inheritance. And then the other way we can do that, if you want to do it on the same layer, I'm just going to turn the shading layer off. You can hit the lock transparency button, your icon, or whatever, and then you can just do it manually on the same layer. And maybe for something quick and easy or for quick concepting, you might want to do that, which is totally fine. Um, you do what works for you. I've done that before. I, well, I, ha I do do this um, when I'm doing more of a painterly shading type look. So there we go. Because I can do this on a separate layer, a layer, but I want to get certain color mixes together. So I don't always do that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for how you can use a couple different varieties of masking and all that fun stuff um, in Krita to help you color and make your life a lot easier. I hope putting this all in one big video was helpful uh, versus having separate videos for each feature because I know it's getting to the point where those videos are getting a little old. So hopefully this is a lot more useful than what I had before. And again, if you're interested in practicing with this um, line art and more, I do have this available um, if you donate $3 to my coffee. You get this image as well as three, yeah, three others, which are just mermaids. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Like, Please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.